Hey guys, what's up? It's Will Patson here again and welcome to another illustrated tutorial. Today I'm actually going to be showing you how to create these lines behind this text. Now this text is hand drawn, so that means that I've scanned it in and I've image traced it to my illustrator. But I didn't actually have any of these lines behind the text and it gives it a really cool old style effect and this effect is really easy to do once you start to understand a few basic principles about how Illustrator works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the whole thing here. I'm going to go to my libraries and I'm actually going to press alt and bring this out of the libraries and you'll see I've got my actual hand drawn thing here and I scanned this in and image traced it straight in and that's basically how I did it. I'm going to create a new artboard over here on the right and as you can tell everything's new in Illustrator now we've got this new GPU preview which you can see up on the top right there you press command E you can get rid of that but the GPU preview means that we're using the graphics card with it in the computer so you get really cool animated zooms now and everything looks just a lot more uh, smooth and refined when you're doing Illustrator work Anyway, enough of that, I'm going to go ahead and create some lines. So I'm going to go to this thing here, and it's basically the line tool. Or you can use a pen tool, and I'm going to create some horizontal lines like so. Uh, so that's a stroke. I'm going to bump this stroke up to five, and we're just going to leave it on black like so. I'm actually going to put this down to three. I think it'll work better on three. Um, actually, no, put it back to five. I can't make my mind up. So what I'm going to do from this is I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit and I'm going to alt drag this whilst holding shift. So I'm going to alt drag it to about here. Nah. Oh, hang on a sec. I've just gone off onto a different document. I'm going to alt drag it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alt drag this down by holding shift as well and that's going to copy it. I'm going to press command D and it's going to just copy the command I just gave it on Illustrator. I'm going to do it to about here and see what that looks like. That looks cool, but I want the lines to be a bit more spaced together. So I'm going to alt drag again, and that looks better. So I'm just going to press Command D, zoom out a bit there. And what happens when I'm pressing Command D? It just copies exactly what I've done before, and it's going to carry on doing that. I'm going to highlight all these strokes, and I'm going to go to Object. I'm going to go down to Pattern, and then to Make, and it's going to go all crazy on us for a second. And this is basically a new pattern, so I'm going to call these lines. And I want it in a grid system, and I want to size tile with art, and I'm going to change the vertical spacing so I don't get any of these weird lines, because you can see it's not like a seamless pattern, you can see where it starts and finishes, so I'm just going to play around with this until it visually looks perfect. There we go, seamless. After that, I'm just going to go to the top menu here and press done, and what you see has happened is that we've got this like swatch over here called lines. I've got another one here that I made beforehand. I'm just going to delete that. But um, you get this swatch over here called lines in your swatches panel. If you don't see your swatches panel, go up to window and go down to swatches and make sure it's ticked and the swatches panel will appear. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually set up the shape now. So I'm going to go over to this object here. I'm going to press command A. And what that does is it creates a compound path. And you can tell whether a piece of work is a compound path because it's either it looks like a group and you can actually use the pathfinder tool on it or you can go up to the top left here and you can see compound path at the top and this is the object type so it's going to show you what kind of object you're working with if i press command z to go back you can see beforehand it was a group i already knew that because if i highlighted one object it would highlight the rest of the group but if I press command A, it does it into a compound path. Now the compound path is actually like tricking Illustrator into thinking it's just one path. So if you were to use the pathfinder function over here, and I'll show you. If you were to use the pathfinder function, and if I was to minus from this, it would hold the whole shape together. Whereas if it was a group, I'm just going to go back, and this is a group now. If it was a group and I tried to do that, it would get rid of all the shapes for some reason and hold with the H and that's not what we want so we want the uh, compound path to be on on this certain object the next thing I'm going to do is press command C to copy this object and then I'm going to press shift alt and I'm going to drag I'm going to drag it to the right just a tiny bit to the right and I've just made a duplicate there I'm just going to make it easy for you guys to see I've made a duplicate on the top 
And what I want to do with this is I actually want to bring this duplicate to the back. So I'm going to highlight the duplicate on the top that's moved to the right, right click and go to arrange and then center back. And you can see that that's been sent to the back of this object here. The next thing I want to do is I want to highlight this back object and press this line swatches. Now that's the pattern being put onto the shape. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this sort of object here doesn't look so nice and finesse. As you can see, if I zoom in, this is like a hand drawn, but this isn't. And we need to find a way to make this a bit more grungier looking and it's surprisingly easy. All we need to do is to expand this pattern, is highlight the pattern, go to object, go to rasterize, so and press OK as soon as you're there. And it's going to go to, and progress to rasterizing it. And that means it's not a vector image anymore. So what we need to do is go up to your windows, go to image trace, wherever it is, here it is, and go down and use this preset. This preset is my own preset. It's called the hand look for small and it's just what I use. And what that's going to do is it's going to trace what the pattern back into Illustrator. And that means that we're going to have a bit more of a grungier looking hand drawn pattern in the back. The values I've used for the pattern are a threshold of 116. I'm tracing uh, with black and white and then paths at 1%, corners at 0% and noise at 26%. If you want more less noise, you can put that down, but make it a bit like that will make it a bit more harsh. If you bring it up a bit, it will make it a bit like more smoother, I guess. So I'm just going to keep it like that. And then I'm going to press ignore white. Press ignore white at the bottom because otherwise you'll have like white strokes within there as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and press expand. Now, as you can see, we've got this pattern at the back like so. And it's a group at the minute. So we need to press command eight again to make it into a compound path. Now, beforehand, there was a bit of a gap between the actual lines and the center text. And the way that I achieved this was by going to right and pressing it on the main one, go to object, path, go to offset path. And I've done it at a offset of three pixels with mitre joint and a, meter, and a mitre limit of four. And what this is gonna do is create sort of like a stroke around here, but it's basically another shape that's expanded around the actual text. I'm going to, from here, I'm going to hold shift and press on the back pattern and that's selected everything there. I'm going to press minus front on the pathfinder option over here, which will actually delete the back and a bit of the outwards of the pattern. So we are just left with these little strokes on the right here, but they don't look too hand drawn yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight them again. I'm going to go up to uh, object, I'm going to go to rasterize again, and I'm going to rasterize it and repeat the process. Go to my little preset here, and I'm going to image trace it straight back in and expand it. And as you can see, we've got a bit more of a grungier sort of a look with these texts. Now, we don't want it to be perfect, that's the idea of it, and that is how I created it. If you like this, then you'll like any more of my other illustrated tutorials that will be coming out. And you can also go check out my creative market shop where I've got all my Instagram sort of badges that I use that you can buy and basically you can put them onto your documents really easily. Um, I don't know which ones I can show you just here like this. I could show you this one. You just bring it into your document here and you'll have it to play around with um, straight on your Illustrator. You can put it in your work or your Instagram and I've also got a font coming up as well and here it is. Here's the font here and this is going to be fun for you guys. I'm just trying to kern it all at the minute but for some reason my open type isn't working very well. But uh, yeah, this is the font that you guys will be getting. I'll be looking for name suggestions because at the minute I've just called it Patterson Rustic Font. And yeah, that's going to be out on my creative market very soon. And it could be free for a limited time. So you might want to get there. As you can see, here's a font in action just here. Um, and it's an actual font at the minute, but the kerning is not properly set yet. I'm just testing it all out. So if you want that, this font, stay tuned to my channel and I'll be telling you when it's done. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.